What is up YouTube? Due to all the requests, today I want to go over every single setting and my reasoning as to why I have it set the way that I do. I will have chapters set up for the different tabs and the settings so that you can skip to whichever ones you would need the most. Let's get started. I want to begin with the graphics settings because I do feel like that is the most important for most people. First, my monitor is always my main monitor, display adapter, automatic, display mode, more or less, because I do like to have things on my other monitor running at the same time, whereas if you have it on full screen, when you ought tab out it would completely make my screen black for a second and it would take way too long because i have it on borderless these two settings here are just disabled for me but you always want to have this at your native the display area aspect ratio on auto always brightness i like to go a little bit above the medium here because i feel like i can see a lot more now the in match frame rate cap i like to keep here limited at 240 because that is my max refresh rate that I have on this monitor and because if I don't have it limited if I have it on unlimited then it allocates way too much to the game itself and it kind of makes everything on my other monitor freeze so that is the main reason why I have it here locked out at 240. The out of match frame rate cap I have it at 144 because I don't really see a reason to have it any higher than that. Sharpness I like to keep it at 50 I like to keep my things sharp but I do believe this is the default and it looks pretty good. V-Sync always off this thing always throws me off when I'm aiming if I have it enabled. And NVIDIA Fast Sync is just a better version of V-Sync if you have an NVIDIA graphics cards, but I, I don't really put that on. If the shearing in between frames is noticeable for you, then it might be good to turn this on. Under field of view for my default FOV, I really like to keep this at 110. I like to keep it decently high because I want to see more in my screen, but I don't max it out because otherwise things would be way too small in the center of the screen. For the third person FOV for the vehicles, I also like to just keep it at 100. I've, I don't think I've change this. I haven't really seen a reason to. Scope magnification, I have not done this here because I don't really need it. I do recommend having it off. As you saw on the screen here, it would impact performance as it says. I don't really see a reason to do that. Now for the basic graphics, I do just like putting everything at medium and then basically forgetting about it. I also have a 3080 Ti as my graphics card so I can afford to do stuff like that. But because I do record and I need very high frames and good graphics at the same time, I do like to keep it here on medium. It could be that maybe you have a 3060 or something and you put it on medium and it works perfectly fine for you because you're not recording. But if I put this to ultra or extreme, it just hurts my performance way too much when I am recording. One really big thing that I highly recommend taking off every single time, no matter what, is the weapon motion blur. This just hurts my eyes and it makes everything look a little weird. Now, if you're having issues when there's a lot of stuff happening at once, then it might be good to turn down the particles here. And reflections would also be pretty good if you're having low FPS. But in general, using the graphics preset does the job real well. Under advanced graphics for the rendering scale, I like to just keep it at regular 100 here. I don't usually see a reason to turn it down or up. But again, if you're having FPS issues, then turning it down might help. Depth of field just looks weird to me, so I turn it off. All of these global illumination, quality shaders, texture streaming, shadows, all these things, I'd like to just keep everything on medium, which I'm pretty sure is what happens with the graphics preset here. But if you're having FPS issues, then shadows, turn it down, it should help. And last but not least, under the super resolution graphics modes here, I really just like to turn it off. I really don't like how they look at all. If you want to mess around with them, then go ahead. For example, if you have an AMD graphics card, turn this one on. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, turn this on or an Intel one. That's kind of idea here. And mess around with temporal super resolution, but I don't really recommend it in general because the game looks a little weird when you have it on. But again, if you're having FPS issues, then it could be useful. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then I definitely recommend doing the NVIDIA reflex low latency mode here. Put it on enhanced if you can. And this should reduce the amount of delay that you feel between inputs. Now for the next most important tab here, let's go to keyboard and mouse. Here I have to preface this by saying that I have an 800 DPI mouse, right? So I keep my sensitivity fairly low. I like to keep it at 1.90, which almost lets me complete a full circle with one swipe of the mouse pad. Vertical sensitivity at one, horizontal at one. I lowered the ADS sensitivity multiplier to 0.9 here because it just didn't match how I felt whenever I was aiming down sights. So this is really something that you need to test for yourself, see what feels good. If you're constantly overshooting people, then turn down all your sensitivities. These are the ones that you want to change. You don't really want to change the vertical and horizontal sensitivity as much. Only really the multipliers here, but just test it out, mess around. If you're going too far when you're trying to snap onto someone, then definitely turn it down. If you're not moving enough and you're not going quickly enough, then turn it up. This is purely preference. I keep ADS vertical and horizontal sensitivity the same here, just at one default. ADS sensitivity 
type, I'm pretty sure MDV is the default and that's what I like to keep it at. I don't really see a reason to go for any of the other ones. The distance coefficient, I like to keep it at 1.33 because this is stable throughout most games that I've ever played. So I like to keep everything just about the same, always. The sensitivity transition mode, I do like to keep this at ADS transition. The toggle at the start of aiming down sight or at the end of aiming down sight really messes me up way too much. ADS transition is what most games use. So because of that muscle memory, I have to recommend ADS transition here. For the independent offset optic control, I just like to keep it at default because I, I don't really want to mess around with keybinds to make it independent. I want to press the button and it switches my optic. That is it. If you play with your inverted controls here, then wow, I, I must say that is impressive. The only one that I would invert is the aircraft control here, the input, because in most games, you're probably used to moving your mouse up or your stick up, making the actual plane or whatever dive down. You're controlling the nose, right? So this type of stuff is usually better. So I would definitely recommend inverting it just because you're probably mostly used to that. Any of these other ones, I would not recommend. The vehicle sensitivity, you have to mess around with this again. You really just want to go into an A and D drill game mode here and just mess around with your sensitivity, see what you like. All of this is literally a default. I've never changed it and I don't really see a reason to. The aircraft sensitivity, you can just copy this if you want to, but really I've all I've done here is increase a little bit of the mouse sensitivities because it felt a little slower. Flying with this a little bit higher is definitely better in my opinion. Gunner sensitivity I kept the same, nothing here has changed. For the controls in combat, that really the main things that I have done here is switching the lean peek from hold to toggle because it makes it a lot easier when you're behind cover to peek in and out and move at the same time since you're probably using your index finger for E and for D. You don't want to have to hold both somehow. So toggle lets you not have to do that. Now running and walking, I definitely also recommend them on toggle because I don't want to be holding holding keys most of the time. Aiming of course on hold and I do think that holding breath is much better because you want to let that go as quickly as you can after you get the kill. Now for the switch optic or zoom I do recommend having it on your mouse buttons if you have one because that will make it a lot quicker than having to use your thumb or something pressing N by default. Lastly for the screen actually I have weapon 1 on 1 and weapon 2 on 2 melee on 3 always. I don't like to use previous and next weapon because sometimes it really messes me up in the middle of a fight. Next for the screen in interactions here. I pretty much have everything on default here. I don't think I changed anything. I really, really, if you've noticed, I like to keep things as default as possible. And then for the vehicles tab, I do have a little interesting thing happening here where with the aircraft, I mostly keep everything the same. But if you notice for the pitch up and pitch down, I have extra keybind set so that I could do the maximum pitching using my space bar by holding it or the maximum amount of downwards pitch by holding control. This makes it a lot easier to not have to move around my mouse too much. This just helps a lot when you're flying. I do recommend you do this. The next most important screen I believe is the game one here where I just completely turn off automatic airborne mantle because it's just obnoxious to have. And the weapon switching via scroll wheel really messes me up during hard fights sometimes. And because I've died to it, I just turn it off. This automatic scope magnification here, I don't have a reason to turn that on, so I just keep it off. Changing the hit effect color is only useful if you're colorblind so if you are then of course change it up you probably know which one you want to do here the mark wheel the marking transparency all these two things i just keep at default i believe they're by default at 100 for the rest of it i pretty much have it all on default i don't think i changed anything here the press to mark location is useful put mark targets in safe box first also useful if you're playing operations and same with the put high value items in the safe box first here you can give the game a threshold to figure out if it puts it in the safe box automatically or not but because i have not played operations i have not fine-tuned this it's probably better to have it at like a 25,000 or something this different item sorting in separate rows i found very useful during the alpha when i played operations i would definitely recommend keeping that on and then auto sort when opening stash i did not like that it just makes it take too long whenever you're opening up the stash you have to wait for that refresh and i don't like that at all there's also a button that you can auto sort in the stash so i recommend using that button instead whenever you actually need to auto sort and this order is my favorite one so far but this would probably change once I actually start playing operations. This is 
purely preference. Now let's go to the screen tab, which I don't feel like is too important, but I do like to show my parameters here because I like to see my FPS and my delay and all those types of things. This just sounds useful. I haven't really dealt with it too much since I have not played operations yet. And this one to close the backpack or the pickup tab when you're being attacked in operations also sounds useful, but I have not messed with it and I don't think it was there during the alpha, so I can't really say. Just test it, see if you like it. It's probably going to be very useful. For Warfare, which is really where I stand here, I do like to keep the rotating perspective on. I find it more intuitive for me to figure out where I'm at versus an enemy in the map whenever I have this on. But this is again preference, see which one you like better. The infantry view distance I like to keep at 70 here because this is all about the minimap, right? If you have it too zoomed out, then you won't really be able to tell where the enemies are too easily on the minimap when they shoot at you. And if you have it too zoomed in, you're not going to be able to see as much of the battlefield as you should be able to when looking at the minimap. So I like to keep it at 70 here. The ground vehicle view distance and the aircraft view distance I like to just keep at default. But the minimap icon scale I have put up to 170 here because I really like to see the minimap. I like to see what is what in the minimap. And then of course I have everything here for the language on English because I that's my main language. And lastly to go into the audio tab, this is of course all preference here. I like to keep it at 80 because otherwise it's too loud. Mode, I like to keep it on headphones instead of speakers. I do think this HRTF mode thing helps with the spatial audio, so I have put it on. And I think it really helps. I can I can actually tell where people are coming from, so I definitely recommend putting this on. For the music volume, I actually just keep off because I include my own music inside of the videos. The sound effect volume, I put at 91 here because it was just too loud in an aircraft, so I put it down a little bit. UI and voice volume, 100. And then the chat channels and all this stuff, I just keep at whatever is the default. Lastly, in the privacy tab, all you can really change is if you want to have people be able to see your history, which I do have on because I don't see a reason not to. And then if you want to see some profile stuff, uh, their policies, their data protection stuff, if you want to do that, then here it is. Now, I wanted to keep this video nice and short because this is purely for the people who asked about the video about my settings and hopefully for them it has been useful. I know the most important things here are like the graphics, the sensitivity settings and such. So I wanted to cover those first. Something that would be very beneficial though for everyone is if in the comments you can make sure to write any recommendations that you would have to help people increase the quality without hurting their FPS or what you would do to increase FPS for people who might not have the strongest PC. So what would be the first settings that you would change if you had low FPS and you want to increase them, for example. Leave a like on the video if you can, and I will see you on the next one. I will out.